Stop, assholes. Um, hey, Kaz, do I like big slaps? They're okay. Um, so today we're going to be fixing our slurp problem for good. We've had too many slurp problems. Um, so today we're going to be fixing them. And we're going to be fixing them through testing. Why am I killing slurps? Why are you here? Because I asked you, I think. All right, so let's open up DOSBox. And first of all, we're going to write two tests, one for testing um, input and one for testing output. So let's create a file called bot. Um, we'll put test in, and this will just see how much input we can process. All right, so it's, that's why it smells so bad, what? Okay, so what's gonna happen here is we're going to delete all this line handling stuff, um, socket cleanup stuff, whatever. We'll just leave that there. We don't need the line stuff. Um, this is purely just to test that um, when we process a packet, um, it will, you know what? We can kind of hit two birds at one stone here. We'll just make this um, an echo thing. All right, so we'll process a packet and then we'll send it. Seems fine. So if we get a packet, instead of appending it or whatever, we'll do this and then we will copy the buffer in C and then we'll send it and then we'll free the original buffer. That seemed fine. Seems fine to me. Um, that would be pause, I think. And the length would be length. So we mem copy that and then we enqueue it on the socket and free the buffer. We'll probably free it. And so this should just be a quick echo. Um, and this will be our test bot just to echo stuff. And we'll use a different port, port 6666. Uh, why doesn't C end on its own, write new lines on its own? Um, that's a good question, and the answer is probably because you don't always want to do that. All right, let's add a test.com file. Um, we'll make this a bot objects, and then we'll just make a test objects thing in the make file here. Um, and then we'll just do bot.com and we'll copy and paste that to test.com. Um, yeah, and then it'll be bot objects there and test objects here. Um, now you can see here that it's actually matching every object there, which we probably don't want to do. So, hmm. Can we just insert TCP obj and bot obj there? Does Whatcom's wmake allow us that? Do we need to do multiple files? This is a little tricky. Hey, wmake. Argument list too big. Okay, so um, it's just trying to link in everything there, which we don't want to do. Um, so I guess we're going to go on a little bit of a sidetrack here and we're going to create a linker file. And I guess for now, we'll just leave the bot stuff, but we'll do the test stuff. Um, uh, DOS has such a weird argument um, amount. Um, hmm. You know what we could do? Um, no, we couldn't do that. Maybe. You know what we could do? We could dump the bot and the test stuff in its own directory. Um, and same with all the object files. Um, hmm. I guess we're going to have to open up the documentation for WMake real quick and see what, what the heck we're going to do. It would be nice not to have all this junk in here and instead like 
TCP stuff goes in there, a bot stuff goes in there. For now though, let's just uh, put the bot stuff and it's hello stuff in here. And I guess we'll name it all capitals like before. Um, and then we'll have a test directory and we'll put the test IO thing in there. Um, and we'll just, I guess, W make clean for now. All right, log file, MTCP pipe 3486, we don't need those. So for our make file, we have these TCP objects and our bot objects. Can we put TCP in front of all those? Mm -mm. Why all caps? It's just a convention. Um, seems like a good thing to do to keep a convention. Okay, so we have this little thing here, this little glob called dollar sign open bracket uh, star, which I assume is being converted to something uh, like the name, but can we get the name with the directory? Wait, how does it know to look in TCP ink? Oh, it looks in TCP CD or there. That's a little strange. Um, sure. Uh, we're gonna have to quickly read some stuff then, I guess. So we're gonna go to Whatcom's documentation and look in the tools section. And we're going to find which page the WMaker thing is on. Open Whatcom Make, page 85. scroll down because it's an actual book. PDFs have like a weird offset. Um, so we're going to go down and look for, that's W strip. We're not gonna do that. I guess we're not quite there. Okay, make. Targets, then we got all those. We don't need any of these slash options right now. Um, let's see. It has targets here and uses a dollar sign um, star for those. So perhaps we need to do that instead. Special macros. So we have star with extension removed, full file name of the target, list of all dependencies. That seems like standard make stuff. Okay, and so then we have the expansions here of star open bracket dollar sign close bracket dollar sign uh, that's a little confusing is that just the dependent the only difference i see here is that they're dependency one and dependency two or something um i guess that could be the second one if we go back here do we see what the Okay, so B, C, so we have the carrot for the first, which is the name of what we're doing. Then we have open bracket for the expansion uh, for the second target here, which are, uh, what if you need three dependencies, are you screwed? Uh, probably, yeah. So, uh, TCP obj um, is this list of things. And so, that is created by, I suppose, looking for files in the TCP CDR. Uh, maybe? It's a little, hey, Misaki, do you know about make files? Because this ain't a make file. We have, it has the objects part and those expand to just like the actual objects here. Um, like that. 
And then we have dollar sign at, which expands to the full name of the target. We're going to make a test program, but we're going to also try and figure out how to make the make file dump all the objects in a directory so that we can have a bot directory, a test directory, and then our library code directories. But um, this make file is a little bit smart in a way. Curse the DOS make file clone thing. Yeah, a little bit. Um, basically we're specifying the objects, but I'm not too clear on how it's figuring out to build an object. Because if we go, if it says .asm here, it lists the TCP CDR and TCP CDR as dependencies, which might be true. So it could be that it's just listing these as dependencies for all the files, which is fine. That's true. And then we have asm.object, which is true. Um, and then we have this bracket for the second target. So it could be that these are auto generated. So WASM is calling that. It's calling that with, I would guess it is unclear, but what we could do is probably just replace a lot of these with echoes to see what's happening. All right, dependency declarations. We're going to look for globbing. This is standard make file stuff here. Command lists. All right, that's pretty cool. Then we have macros. Um, dot extensions. Implicit rules. Okay, so we're looking for things about implicit rules. Um, perhaps it's past this part. We have macros here. We're not using macros. Um, we're looking for implicit rules. This is still on macros. Are implicit rules macros? No. Um, that whole bunch of injects and stuff there looks a little bit cheer and complete for my taste. Um, I mean, make is Unix make is cheer and complete. So here we go. These special macros provide the capability to reference targets and dependents in multiple ways. And then we see, well, we see main.obj here, specifying the file properly. Um, and we see macro substitution being used here in the same kind of way that our file, file is using it. So let's see. Macro text substitution. Macro call can be made with macro name. The construct macro name string one equals string two substitutes macro name. The file directive in wlink can accept a set of names separated by commas. Do we have that? I don't think so. And then it just shows us macro substitution here. And that substitutes the object files explicitly. So it substitutes um, the spaces in object files with commas. And then wlink does find those, but we also have .c.obj. Implicit rules. Okay. So this, that was a false lead. Implicit rule follows a command list for a dependency between files with certain extensions. The form of an implicit rule is as follows. Dot dependent extension dot target extension command list. So we have a dot obj and we have a dot cp p. So I guess it looks for the object files. Then it looks for the dot cpp things. And then it converts the first argument 
or the second argument, I guess that's the input to the output. Yes, CPP. This is a big PP stream. Okay, so it shows us we can use extensions to change the order of these. So let's see, they talk about a problem. Um, they have an example here showing the kind of file we have. But, okay, so now it talks about subdirectories. main.obj is cdiri main.cpp header files. Okay, so what we could just do is, perhaps we can put the path to things here. Um, that might be able to make them. Um, and that would have a search path here, I assume that. So let's see if that works. W link is still going to fail. So we're just going to try and build this and see what happens. Um, does it still build it in the directory? Which is what we don't want. Yes, it does. Let's cancel this. W make clean. And let's just have a look at what WPP does. I guess it's putting it in the current directory by default. Um, okay. Can we invoke WPP with an output name? So options, file options. Set object or preprocessor output file name. So perhaps we would have to do fo equals, I don't know, let's just put for now bot test.obj, which shouldn't exist. So let's do wmake. And we have bot test.obj. Um, and we still have the dot error files. So what we're going to do is have a look at how it plays with the dot error files. I didn't do it yet. Um, let's see. EP, FC, FH, FHQ, FI, FO, FR. Um, and so FR would be bot test.obj. Okay. So let's do W make again. FR of France, yes. So that's keeled over already because it's list of stuff is too big. Um, the compile options is too big. So mm, we're going to have to put the compile options in a file, uh, in a separate file, perhaps. Um, can we? Um, I think d this program at least would allow us to, sorry, not WMake, WPP, would allow us to specify command line arguments um, in a file instead. Let's hope that that's true. Let's make this bigger while we read. Um, let's see. Specify file of command lines to be batch processed. So FC is going to be our command lines. So we're going to make um, a command called um, PP args. And then we're going to dump our compile options, which is going to be 
WS. We'll put them all on a new line, I guess. Your PP has arguments with who? Mm. If you want to make me smart today, I would really appreciate if someone would explain to me the difference between whom and who. So the TCP H there is dot slash TCP ink and the C there is that. Um, okay. GL bot. Good luck bot. I was using Unix slashes for these boys. Yes, I hope the bot will be able to work, but today it is not working because of slurp. My arch nemesis and hours of my life being wasted from it. Whom should be used to refer to an object of a verb or present uh, preposition so that PP has arguments with whom would be whom is having the arguments. If you can replace the word he or she use who, if you can replace it with him or her use whom. Okay, so that's actually the subject. So with whom would be like with her. Yeah, I get it. I have a galaxy brain too. So we're going to try and just dump some stuff out, I guess. Um, so command line options would be, what would it be? FC. And that would be PP args. And then we'd specify the output and error file. Okay, that seems fine. Then we have our hello file. Um, hello.object. We can actually get, no, we can't get rid of that. Um, that would actually be bot slash hello.object. And that would output bot slash hello.obj. And again, I'm doing the slashes wrong. Whom to teach CPP, is this correct? I would believe so. This seems fine to me, but while we're at it, let's create a link args file. WL args. Um, and we're gonna put in it this junk, I think. Uh, debug all system com option map eliminate sim file quite quiet. That seems is fine. And I guess it would be the same argument. Um, it would be W link and then F C. Um, sorry, I don't want to run W link interactively. Um, so I, can I specify a, I, I, I'm glad that it is giving me the, the grammar for using W link, but I would like to know the command line arguments. Perhaps I need to specify file. No, that's already specified. Is there include? Let's see, W link. I believe it's also in this file. So this is page 129. We will jump back there shortly, but we will look for W link page. It's just a few pages down. W link, that's W lib. This might not be the right file. So let's go to W link, WD 
link L guide. That could be it. Yes. So how do we specify stuff using a file name full of options? Okay. Is wlink.lnk what we want? That seems like a system file thing. Let's try that anyway. So wlink.link. Undefined system name com. So this possibly is the correct way to do it. Perhaps we need to do an exclamation point for the system. Um, excuse me, I just pressed the up arrow and it made a fish. I don't want that. TCB live packet .obs does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. Okay, so hmm. That's not very helpful. I would like to be able to glob that, if you will, um, even though it's in a subdirectory. So let's head back here. I believe, no, this is definitely not the right page. 126. Everything's broken in the first 30 minutes. Yes, um, th that is the DOS stream tradition. So let's see. Larger applications may have files that are in many different directories. The previous make file would look like this. Main.obj cdir slash main.c header files. So it's specifying that object directories are in cdir main.c header files but I don't want to specify each object. That doesn't, that's not making me happy. I get it, I guess I could. Okay, so you can specify search rules there. Dependent extension, path specification. Okay. That still does main.c cdir. Um, and that still uses dot ob stuff. This looks different here. So let's scroll down here. You got a bugged copy in the mail? No, this is the documentation. It should be fine. So let's try and galaxy brain our stuff. So we have a C and a H and an O file. So the previous make file here would look like this. Um, and it would specify the full path for each dot object file. And it specifies object files as that and header files. And we kind of do that. Um, the issue there becomes dependency management, which is why we have to have the CDR stuff depend on um, other stuff, it's a little bit unclear. How many implicit rules be useful in larger applications if they only search the current directory? So we can specify a path with the extension. So we have hdir and cdir. Um, and then we specify those as paths for .c files. You got a bugged copy in the mail. I know I just read that, but for a second I saw chat move. I didn't master it on this either. I probably should have. Lack of command list in the explicit rule will cause it to um, find that. 
Okay. So it's going to search for them. That seems okay. Chat moves a lot. It only moves sometimes. Notice that make checked the subdirectory for both files. Make optionally may use a circular path specification. Um, that's a little strange. What's the weirdest thing you've seen in documentation? Not sure. Not sure. And so then finally at the bottom we have, oh, we still have the main and calc and stuff. So those object files all have to put that in it. But then they don't do it here. So perhaps this is the last step. Ignoring header file dependencies and using implicit rules may reduce the size of a make file while keeping the functionality intact. The previous example may be made smaller by using this idea. So this is what we're gonna go for, I think. We're not gonna care about header files. We'll just do a make clean for that. Um, so. So here we go, program directory, C program, screen directory. And so C directories can be multiple things. Okay, so let's try that. So in cpp.obj, we're gonna specify um, TCP lib, um, and then we're gonna specify um, a bot, and then I guess test. I think I don't need to escape those, do I? Um, and then we can have it like that, I believe. Let's have a look. And the asm.ob should be TCP lib. So let's see if this works. Packet.ob does not exist and cannot be made. So we need to stop, we need to get rid of all this stuff here and instead have it be implicit, which kind of sucks, but we'll just make sure not to clash. We'll notice when it happens. So we have bot, we have test, and we have bot slash hello dot obj, which is special. Packet dot obj does not exist. How about you don't exist? Does that make sense? It says packet dot obj does not exist and cannot be made by whatever this stuff is. Um, perhaps I'm not using the correct path. Let's just put TCP lib there. Um, then let's put a slash and a dot there. Maybe that'll help. Can I flip the slashes around? Is that what it wants? No, so I've somehow messed this up. Let's undo everything. Uh, okay, I I forgot those. All right, let's close it and add that back to our make file. So 
I was searching in the wrong directory for that. That's my bad. That's on me. So TCP lib. Um, and then we'll search for a test and bot. Test bot. So those are going to be our search directories. Okay. Um, I think it's trying to compile that as assembly. Compiling TCP live slash packet. Option requires a number, WS. Okay, so that's also on me. That's on me. Um, we're going to do PP args. And what switch was it? WS requires an argument. Should I not have the dashes at the start of this? That might be a waste of space. Um, let's just try W making that again. Why is it saying this? Error. Unable to open files types.h, utils.h. So perhaps that is correct there. Or perhaps we need to do dot dot tcp inc because all the code files are in there. It still can't find the files. Perhaps we did need the dash I. Let's have a check. Option requires a number. So that was not correct. So it's shift control Z all this back together. Um, and we have dot slash TCP inc. Let's try that. Unable to open types.h from packet.h. So types.h would be there in TCP inc and not in TCP lib. So let's just try adding a double dot there. No. So it's having issues finding this. Is there a way to run wmake verbosely? slash v slash question mark um do not continue after an error we don't want that um print commands without executing um okay so it will be running tcp lib slash packet fc equals ppr fo equals bot test dot obj fr equals bot test dot obj That's writing stuff properly, but we can actually just do this then. And put an air file there. And I think that should be fine. We could actually probably remove the FO thing there. And the FR, assuming that it's going to put them in the right directory. So let's just do W make again and see what it would write. No, it's putting the error file there, which is, is that what I want? I probably do want the error file there, but let's just humor it and try putting it in the same directory. So it would have been TCP lib packet.error. So we might actually just want to start putting the object files in the object directory. Does that make sense? Um, let's see if we can find... Is it the at symbol that we want here? in order to get the correct name. No, we want to get the just the file name of that of the target. 
let's scroll back up to the tools and see if we can find the table of stuff. Full, the full file name, um, those are file specifiers. So we want to look more in our macro section. Macros, no, yes, macros. Probably a bit up from there. So just um, the end symbol instead of a star symbol. And let us see, memory model there should be WS. So let's see what that runs. Okay. Um, hmm. Perhaps we should, yeah, you know what? Let's keep the directory name in that. I know that's going to create a bit of a hierarchy, but it would just make things easier for us. And that's going to solve issues. Um, because now we can remove all this here and then do um, odds slash um, TCP lib and then odds slash test slash dot obj and we can kind of grab stuff that way I think that seems like a good way to do it might need to have two file directives there does that seem reasonable I think so So packet test.obj cannot be made from existing files. Test.obj, test.obj. It should be searching in there for test.obj. Test, test.io. Test um, so I'll just rename it test.io. Because I know DOS has a file name limit. Okay, that's going to error. Let's just have a look at what it would try and do. So testio.obj, would it try making it? No. Testio.obj, that should look in the test directory. And we find testio.cpp. It finds the bot thing. I think, yes, bot slash bot, but it does not find test slash test IO. Let's change it to test IO should be fine. That's um, under eight letters. It's like six. We'll worry about that later. Let's try and compile this packet thing properly. You know what, let's just put the error in the current directory, uh, in the, I suppose in the obj directory. Yeah. And that way we can read them as an actual file. So let's do wmake now. And we'll look in the obj directory for um, our errors. Code. There's no obj directory. Where did it put that file then? Obj slash packet error. Do I need to make an obj directory? And will that put the error there now? Yes. All right. Unable to open types.h, utils.h, etc., etc. So, hmm. Is it because it's looking in the object directory? 
let's add some more dot dot slashes. And run dobby make. TCP lib slash packet dot CPP cannot find our TCP ink file. Um, is it because I'm needing to put I with a space or something? Perhaps I'm not doing that properly. No, that's not it. What if we put the full path, which would be um, slash code slash TCP ink. That does not work either. Even though we can do dir slash code slash TCP ink and that lists the files there. So what could be happening here? Um, is the include just not working? Let's go back a little bit more. Why do I have 26 CPU load? Hang on a second. What the hell? It's not OBS, is it? Oh, it's um, ButterFS. All right. Well, if you want to scrub, then scrub, I guess. Why not do it while I'm streaming? It doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Double you make. So let's go to our documentation. Am I going to find it? I might if I turn my brain on. So CC guide. And let's look at how we include something. Compiler options summarized by category um, full description summarized alphabetically. So we're just going to, are those compiler options? I think so. So let's scroll down. Option add. I, we're looking for I, I think. Um, false file name to be included. We're not going to do that. We're looking for just I. I. H I equals directory. Page 35. What page is this now? 19. So it should be like 46. Uh, 47. Close enough. So it should be adding that. Um... Perhaps it's case sensitive. Slash code, C drive slash code slash TCP ink. W make. Do I have the time to figure out this mystery? Maybe, but instead what we can do is just do I equals TCP ink there and see if that helps. Yep, um, invalid include directive, utils 47, but drive C code, um, TCP lib utils 47, no, it'd be utils.h 47. include config h is that not getting defined either are my arguments not getting read okay that could explain why things are going so poorly if my arguments aren't getting read at all um so let's remove that and let's just do like 
Ka. Let's put the arguments before the file as well. Unable to open WSWX. So these are actual arguments. I was wrong. So what's the error say now? Unable to open WS. Perhaps it's not saying it this time. Processing batch command line one switch WS. Option requires a number. Okay, so I might be just messed up with my WS thing here. Does it work with other stuff? And it still can't find it. Is that because I moved around the order of stuff? Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Should I put them all on one line? Is that what it wants? Uh, I don't remember what that was. Oh, hey, good. You want it all on one line, huh? Okay, that did it. So it's not WS, it's MS, isn't it? MS for memory model small. Cannot open. Okay, so now we do bot tests PCP obj. TCP lib packet dot obj. So it can't open that. Obj TCP lib packet dot obj. It should be TCP lib. W make. Packet.obj does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. Um, that's true. What if we be clever and say the obj file is in object slash TCP lib and then objects slash test.bot and objects slash bot. Could this possibly be a way out? No. What if I put it here? No. So we're going to head on back to the linker guide or whatever. And I guess we could just add those there. See what happens. Nope, that does not work. So we want to specify where object files can be. Wait, I was putting them in the wrong directory. It should be obj, not objects. So should it be dot obj object? W make oh, object slash TCP lib. It might actually work. Um, okay. Hmm. 
and now it, it can't figure out where the bot.obj file is. Which is generated from bot.cpp. There's no bot.cpp in that folder. Sorry, wrong. Bot.cpp. Yes, that is there. So it is not looking there, perhaps. It finds stuff in TCP lib. Uh, does it find anything in test? No. So we're still having issues here where it's not looking in test or whatever. Do I need to put a space there? Would that help? Ignoring out of place path specifier. Okay. Well, that did not help. Perhaps, hmm. It certainly should be looking there, but it seems like it's not handling multiple directories properly here. Undefined system name, system, directive near system. So wlink dot link has its own format, I guess. Let's do w make clean. When we clean, we're going to want to clean um, object. Just delete object slash object. Um, let's actually just dump. Uh, I'll have to figure out cleaning in a bit. I might, I just want to, I might want to just entirely delete the object file, um, object directory, then rebuild it. Okay, bad directive near, it still hasn't built bot dot, it built hello dot object, obviously, but it's not building bot objects, which is bot dot object, is it? Object, bot, bot dot object, what? Um, it puts IP assembly object there. That's because it's an assembly file though, I think. So let's dump that in object. Uh, we're gonna make a make clean file. So can I do Dell um, object? Um, no, is there a parameter I can pass? Dell F object? No. Del Q object. All right. So Del Q object. And then we want to make directory. Uh, object, I think. That didn't delete it. RM there. Object RM tree. DOS recursively delete directory. Where's Firefox? I'm sad that we had to open it now, but I guess it should be fine. Firefox. Taking an awful long time to load. All right, so we're going to DOS delete directory tree. Um, that could be helpful. Del tree command. We don't have that. Um, that's uh, for windows. RD. Do we have RD? RD odd. RD. RD odd. dot slash obj tcp lib you know what we'll just remove the files in the directory how about that so del object tcp lib slash that 
What? Oh. File not found. What? How did you not find a file there? Oh, it's dot, dot, dot. I get it. Del Q. The files are still there. Maybe we need to... Del Q object slash test. It doesn't find anything there. So did I just accidentally recursively delete stuff? No, nothing in test. There's something in bot, so let's try that. Okay, so we're going to do del q object um, slash test tcp lib um, bot and then object. And then we'll figure out what to do with the symbol file later. We also want to... No, we won't worry about the wasm thing. Let's W make... Oh, you want to go out, cat? Yeah. You can leave my room. Please don't key in my room. Okay. So, it seems to have made things. That's good. So, it made the bot stuff. Hasn't made test yet. And it's trying to use dot link in order to do stuff. So what if we just change system to com there? Directive error near option. So I guess we have to find the w link file format. So let's see system dos option map name app name. So system dot uh, com. Then we put our option. And then there's debug, I guess. Let's see. Hmm. Not what I wanted. Do we have an error file for that? Let's just check that IP assembly is going in the TCP lib thing. It's not, is it? All right, let's just double check. I think that's correct. Let's do wmake clean and then wmake. Is there a better way to do that? to run the compiler multiple times. I'm sure it would do that if it could. So is it going to dump that IP assembly thing in the wrong place? Oh, I didn't put the correct extension there. So let's see. Cannot open file. So is there a way? Oh, okay. Um, oops. So we need to specify the output file there. I don't know what I was on that made me think that. So let's see, wmake, uh, wasm. Um, we want to fo and fr yeah so the same kind of things here fo and fr there we go let's w make and we are having our uh linker errors show up why are there all these dot error files i guess that's because there's errors that would make sense huh uh bot dot map w link so where would linker errors go? Um, 
we want to pipe them somewhere, don't we? Because we're now just going to be running errors off our files. So w link. I guess we would put the directive for um, the error file. Option map name file app name file. Uh, we're going to be looking for error file. Um, error, error. Wow. File error. File match case. Says so mod file, lib file. Is that error file? Perhaps. We should be wlink system minus f. Is there, an, there should be an index at the back of a book, right? Um, let's look there. F for file or u for that. Uh, F, F, file directive, so it could be an E, errors, page 44 and 233, and it should be, we'll So how do we get the error output to be, we might just have to pipe it to a file. Whatever. Do we have to put all of our stuff on a single file, a uh, single line, like we did with the other thing? That could be what the issue is. Undefined symbol stack and is space and BIOS. It should be system and DOS, right? Maybe. No. What were we using before as our linker junk? Let's check out our backup um, code make file. Debug or system com option map sim file quiet. Okay. So debug system com option map. Now I guess there's debug all. Yeah, let's try putting that at the front and just see if it cares about that. It does not care about that. So I think it all needs to be on a single line, maybe. Unsure. Undefined symbol, f printf stack, BIOS keyboard. It looks like we're not linking with the system library. Um, with libc. Um, is it kf or kn? N. W link name bot dot com file object tcp lib slash dot dot object file object bot slash dot dot object is it not linking with 
Mm. What if we switch those around? Because it doesn't seem like it's complaining about um, missing the bot stuff. Undefined system name. Oh, do I have to put another file? No, that still has the same issue. What if we put a comma? No, that seems to have the same issue. Undefined system name com. What if we put that there? Undefined system name com. That can't be right, can it? Undefined system name system. Do we just put com at the start? Directive near option. This is confusing me a little bit. Um, if it's okay to say that. I don't want to be too politically correct. Undefined system name com. W link system com. Cannot open that path not found. Why are you mad? Did I upset your feel feels? Liberals can't handle anything, can they? Undefined system name com. I logic you into rage. Okay. Okay, we're going to go back up and read some examples. Linking 32 bit stuff. System DOS option map name file library. System com option map name file library. System com. I have done that. Option map. Eliminate sim file. What if we just dump these args into um, name bot.com file bot dot uh, I think it's file object slash um, bot slash whatever dot object as well as um, object TCP lib. Cat keeps turning off your screen. What do you mean? Does your cat have thumbs? Undefined system com. Sorry. Sorry, sorry what? Undefined system name com. System DOS, system com. So let's Google this. Undefined system com. Let me search it in my other browser. Undefined system name com. Put it in quotes. Nothing. Okay. System DOS. Undefined system name DOS. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? 
directive file object spec. Okay, we got that. Um, system, system name. What is system name? Let us scroll down and have a uh, insight into what system name can possibly be as specified for um, no, it does it not specify what system name can be? I need someone to pray for me. It doesn't say what system name is. Let us chill for a bit and let us look in the glossary for S. QRS, we're going to look for system name. System Directive, page 171, joins Misaka in prayer. I need your prayers. One prayer equals one sub. Sub. System. SY. Sim file. Oh, you can put the file name there. That's good. Sim trace. Okay. Synchronize system. System name, directive, end. System begin, system name, end. Huh? System begin format DOS. System begin, system begin, system name, directive, end. It allows you to associate a set of linker directives with a specified system name called the system name. This set of linker directives is called a system definition block. So, uh, is this not what I want? Am I looking for format or something? Because this sounds like we're doing format com or executable com. System com here seems to not set the system. Or the second form, system deletion. Third form, all direct drives specified in the system definition block will pre processed. System called statistics format DOS, libpath, and then it sets the system based on that. Okay, um, so do I need another thing? Perhaps I have been too hasty with my assumption that system... Can I just remove it? Can I just remove it because it knows that .com is the... Yeah, okay. All right, let's just have a look at what errors we get now. Wow. Not even piping properly. Zero out of 10. Zero out of 10. Oh, should we W make more? Okay. Redefinition, void up in it. So it's redefining stuff. Is this because I have not removed things from the command line? Perhaps I should just do that. And we can do wmake and it should be fine. Not fine. Wmake more. So it can't open the system stuff. Okay, so W link is obviously removing what we want to link from the system, um, like the system wide stuff. So if we search for W link, so we can override it. Perhaps we should rename it my dot link. Oh no.
the wlink.link includes the file wlink.system.link. Uh, so, am I supposed to include that? Hmm. Just scroll down. System begin DOS, system beat DOS. Should I be defining system DOS on the command line? System DOS. System DOS. No, that does not help. Undefined system name com. Should be system com, shouldn't it? What? System, what, debug all system com. Have I just not noticed this didn't work? Yeah, I think that's the case. All right. Um, this is fine though, because what we're going to do is just include the default one. So include wsystem.link and that should be easy and fine and fix everything. But that's fine because it doesn't work. So we're going to look in the whatcom folder. Drive C, whatcom, bin W, um, it should be WL system.link. Um, system begin com. And then format DOSCOM. So let's paste this in here. Um, this is probably a bad idea, right? Um, what if we actually just remove that system declaration there and see if that still gets included and works? Obviously it will not work if I clobble it. So that does not work. What if we paste that stuff into here? Undefined system name DOS. What? Oh. What? Oh. So let's do that. Dobby make. Sock, sock, and data have not been declared in test IO. That's fine. Those are those are appropriate errors. So we want to find the include thing, and we want to find out how to set our system to com. Um, is there a way to include? Because we want to include the system thing, don't we? I saw in. If we find the system directive here, we write system statistics there or stats. System directive can be used to redefine a previously defined system. So, how do we set the system? Ah, uh, it's because we have our system there. And if we put DOS or a COM, and then in our make file, we could put system com and then that would work correct um let's try making bot.com again okay so that worked and if we delete that it's definitely it's not including the original 
comm system, is it? No. Uh, and it says here, if we go back... At DOS, N98 DOS, Sys at DOS. Format DOS. Note that the wlink.link includes the file sys, includes the file wlink.sys, wsystem.link, which is located. It says it includes it, but note that the file wlink.link includes the file wsystem.link. So I don't understand exactly what's happening here. It seems like I'm specifying the system correctly, but it is not linking properly. Um, you specify system on the command line, don't you? What if I do system DOS, system begin com 21 or something? That still works. What? Are my options just being ran regardless? What if I remove these? W make. So these are being read even though it is not I suppose if I put, huh? So not com does not work. But what if I set not com in the make file? Then that works. So system com with anything at the end. Now, what if I do system not com at the start? That does not work. So I can't just set the system there. I think system has to be set on the command line like this. And I guess we just put com there. Wait, what did it say? It just said something. Some error. Undefined system name, not com. So perhaps the system not com should go at the end after it's been defined. And then we can remove these and that should work. Huh. So it's not including what file is it? W system dot link. Okay, I'm going to quickly search that up. wlsystem.link Or is it wsystem.link? wlsystem.link, yes, show results instead for. Um, W link does not work, etc. etc. How to compile com files. W link not included. Well, we could just use the include directive, perhaps. Well, they have a default W link here. Oh. So, what if I just Paste all that in there, then add some extra options, and then do system com. A. A. We did it. 
All right. So, an hour and a half in, we can finally get to our, our actual coding. All right. Time to do some programming, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Christo. Um... So we have bot.com. Does that actually run? You know what? While we're actually here. No, never mind. We won't worry about that stupid interrupt message. Okay, so we're going to. You know what? Can we just put the bot.map and bot.sim in the object directory? Object Mac equals object slash. Oh, I don't care. I'd have to like make a different one for each program. We're not going to do that. All right. So we have our PP args. We're going to do W make. We're going to go to code and we're going to start working on our test. Why is hello.obj there? It should not be there. Um, Dell, bot.com, wmake. It's writing it to hello.obj. Why are you doing that, buddy? That's because I'm using NASM for that, huh? It should be object bot hello.obj. wmake. Bot slash hello.assembly does not exist. Did I just delete my assembly file? Yes, I did. Oops. 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 Oh no. What just happened? Did I delete something important? Uh oh, problem. Where'd the assembly file go? Hello.obj. Are you secretly an assembly file? Because that's the only thing I think you could accidentally be. What are you? TGIF? No, okay. Um, Vim hello.obj. Uh, find.name.assembly. Okay, so we've lost our assembly code we've written before. Um, is that fine? But we made a copy, a backup, if you will. Let's dust it off. I, I hear it. Well, I don't know how good it is, but that's fine. We were having trouble with it anyway. What have I gotten downloads? Just junk. Okay, docs. No, not docs. Drive C code bot. Hello.asm. No hello.obj, please. And then in the make file. We will redo our change to be object bot hello. Does not exist. Yes, it does. Oh, I might need to restart DOSBox. It doesn't like it when you just move files around. No, it does not believe that it, that it exists. Excuse me? What's my, what's the arguments for NASM? NASM F for, for file? O for out file? Um, F for format? And then we have the, I don't know. 
perhaps we need to put that afterwards. But it seems like it should know how to do this. Oh. What? How, bot slash hello dot object does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. This should be object slash bot slash hello. All right, and we have errors everywhere. That's fine. Um, I don't know why. Syntax error, line one. Why? Why, why, why? Why dot JPEG? Syntax error. Colon is expected. What happened? Is it because we're trying to use dot ASM dot obj for this and it's passing it to, uh, we can just run that command, copy make n. Yeah, it's trying to run wasm on that. Um, Okay, let's just change that to hello.obj and see if that works. Great, now we can run the test stuff. All right, test code, everything is back together, good as new, right as rain. Rickety splits. So I've deleted a whole bunch of code from here. Let's go back to our bot.2.cpp code. So we have our socket. Good job. Thanks, big brother. Yeah, we want to update software. Um, so we're going to do wmake. Segment relocation, segment relocation. Current receive packet, receive new packet. Um, let's just wmake test dot com. All right, TCP uh, line buffer and line length. So let's see line buffer. We don't need that send line there, do we? We just do yep line buffer and line length. Symbol data has not been declared. Uh, data. Mem copy. Um, I'm supposed to be copying that to the buffer somewhere. Hang on. That code I deleted seemed to be important actually. Okay. So we're going to expect this to be not bot.com, test.com. All right, so if we run tests, it should try and connect to, a, it'll just be a netcat right now. So netcat 666, and it should just be a straight input output. So hi, and it should send us hi back, but it doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> um, which is fine because because nothing's easy with this let's be honest so we get a packet we copy it then we enqueue it um, it should be enqueuing um, let's do a printf sent to packet the bed is calling you. You think you will be going? No, you stay. Don't queue any of my packets. Fine, you can go. 
but it's supposed to be sending a packet, and yet it doesn't. Curious. Um, it should be enqueuing it. Why would you not enqueue it? You claim to send packets, and yet you do not. Curious. Send new buffer. Sock and Q, and then it it should be enqueuing the data. Perhaps it's not sending the proper data. Let us. Wow! Give me my packets, Kaz. Um, we're going to be running Wireshark, and we'll see what's going on here. Maybe something extremely simple is going on. Hi. We send hi and it acknowledges it. Don't eat my packets. I need them. Oh, I'm so angry. I bet you've never seen someone as angry as me. But, uh, yep. You're probably wondering how I got this angry. Well, buckle up because it's gonna error. Uh, Test.com. You know what? Let's just. I'm gonna type w make anyway. We're just gonna remove the bot from from this. I'm glad I finally got the make file cleaned up. I just wish it was at another time. Test. Hi, and then it should print sent packet negative whatever. That's not what I want. It's not what I want. But if it runs out of the buffers, it should send something different. It's getting the same buffer. Can I tell it to print as no? That should be long in integer, I think. Maybe. Send packet. Okay, so we're gonna get the buffer. We have the buffer and then we enqueue the buffer. So why is it not sending? Why ain't it sending? I need you to explain this to me. Input, hi. Hi, 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 hi. It's not sending anything back. It sends an acknowledgement. Okay, well, let's set logging on. So we're going to start running. We're going to create a bat file for test dot bat or yeah, I guess test.bat is fine. And it's going to be set logging, set log file equals test.log, set debugging equals 127, wmake test.com. Test. Test.bat. There we go. And now let's see. What does the log file say? Does it say we try and send a packet? No. No, it doesn't. Okay. All right, so let's see. Am I crazy here? I don't understand. I'm telling it to enqueue the buffer. Perhaps it does not want to enqueue the buffer. How about we check the return result? Uh, 
and then we run hi there, and then we quit out, and then we view the log. Send, no, it just sent a uh, nothing. And it got a return code of nothing. So, hmm. Is this blocking? Perhaps it's not driving stuff all the time. All right, so let's do printf uh, driving packets. And then we'll put a little sleepy before, a sleep after it, just so it doesn't spam everything. And then every time it dequeues a packet, it should be um, actually copying stuff. I'm not too sure. Even if it's not copying, it should still be sending it. Okay, well, let's run test.bat. Driving packets, driving packets. Um, hi there. Big there. Did it just send it the first time, or did I just type it twice? Um, hello again. I'm not sure if that was like a mistake. In All right. Hi again. No, it's definitely not echoing things. So, let's change that to driving packets. Sent packet B, buff RC. So sometimes in queuing it's not working. I must be missing something obvious. Okay, so I can't trust this code because I don't know that it works. So let's see. This is the C code that should enqueue things probably, yes? So it handles the line. It appends it to the buffer, and within that call, it could possibly print out the data and enqueue it. And the buffer that it enqueues is the TCP buffer. If the buffer is null, we're not checking for that, but we are printing it so we can check it by eye. data is the data that is the data let's do a little print first um, got packet pi and we're going to put user data and then the length of the packet um, and we're going to rename test.bat to tost um, just so I don't have to type a dot bat. Yeah, tossed. It's fine. All right. Hello. So we got packet A three D A E thirty eight. It has a length. Then we enqueued a packet. Am I not setting the socket? No, sock is being set over here. Um, and we are using sock there. It's returning zero. Does that mean good?
send buffer buffer buffer. MTU is 100, MSS is 60. Could that be part of the issue as to why this is not working? Because I have messed with things. No, not there. Um, in C drive, mtcp.configuration. Let's just change that to MTU 576 or whatever. I still tries to send it that doesn't work um let's check that the mtu is like correct test.log mtu is 576 yep now is dosbox configured properly let's look at the config in a second And we'll change these to the 576 and 576. And then we shall try our toss again. Yes, it insists that it has sent a packet, but it has not. I'm fairly sure this worked last stream, right? You know, let's just, let's just quickly go back to our make file and test the bot kind of works. We won't do a, we won't do a hello, we won't import the assembly. Um, and we will find the uh, drive C code bot bot.cpp and we shall remove the do nothing stuff current receive packet okay so that's because uh there's the hello object yeah so let's try this Will the bot work now? Oops. Bot.com. Um, apparently not. What? I, so that works, I think, yeah. Why, why does that? We're gonna be very patient about this and we're going to think about what we're doing and we're going to compare the test and the bot thing. And we're not going to get mad because getting mad is where we make mistakes. So we're going to stare at this code for a little bit and kind of step through it. So when this gets a packet, it runs process packets, which is what we do here. Um, I, I accidentally closed the file. So, um, can we open these side by side? No, unless side pane does that. No, probably not. We could diff them if we really wanted to, but I'm pretty sure I just copy pasted enough of this for it to make sense. So what does the bot do? When it gets a packet, it does basically the same thing. We print, it does its DQ thing, user data, 
And so it runs append line buffer and then frees the data. For append line buffer, it takes a character and runs handle line, handle line runs send line, and send line runs that. So what happens if we just, I don't want a line buffer, but we'll just, let's just copy all this over it. Let's just copy the dots, the bot, the bot code, and then we'll slowly remove the things that we've, ch that we've changed because it would be better than trying to understand what's happening. Okay, let's run toast. No, not 666, 666. And let's see if this works. Hi. Cast. So let's remove the line buffer code. I become a demon. Yeah. So instead of line buffer, what we're going to do is run send line. We're going to inline that code to here, which is where it runs. And we call it inlining because you don't fix the indentation and it looks like it's in the line. Okay. Remove pause and after. And we will copy it from a line buffer, user data, um, len, I wasn't setting data length. Oh. I'm a, I'm a, not a hero. I'm a zero. Okay. Hi. And it gives back high and test and it gives back test. Great. We're going to make this go faster and remove some of the debug. And we almost have our test harness. So it's going to connect. I also need to figure out why I keep talking about figuring out why it freezes and I need to restart DOS, but I'll worry about that a bit later. Hi there, what's up? No, that's bot. You want to do tossed. Hi. What's up? Okay, so we have a very simple thing that just echoes the packets. Thank you. Two hours in. So now we're going to make a runner. Yes, install, please. I don't give a shit. So we have our bot. We have our drive C. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a um, DOSBox X dot test dot configuration. And we're going to do run dot test. Is this a, this is a Christian stream? Oh shit. Fuck. Um, what do I do? So our tester should always run tossed and then exit, I guess. Um, so what can we do here? Uh, NK NCL 66. I think that's that. So we run the toss program. Run. And then go high there. What's up? So now we, we can, we're going to write the test part and then once we close it, it should quit exit. It's not running exit. What if I just spam exit at the end? Unliked and unsubscribed. Good. 
it's not running exit. Maybe the tossed program. No, I don't want to run that. I'll just kill DOSBox when I need to. Okay. Test. So we're going to run... Should we write this in Python or Bash? I feel like we should probably write it in Python. So we run the test. Um, and then what we're going to do is just send in various lines of data and wait for it. So two works, three works, one one that works. And then we're just going to feed it very long lines and see if it hangs like that. And if it hangs, we'll error. So let's write it in Python. Um, we'll run test.py. So time to write some Python. User bin nvan python3. Um, let's start with a print hello world to verify that our setup is working properly. Yes, I'm going to be using vim to write it. I'm sorry. Alright, so chmod plus x test.py. Um, chmod. Then we're going to run test.py. Okay, so that runs hello world. So the first thing we want to do is boot up DOSBox. So we're going to do import subprocess subprocess.run dot slash test dot sh and we'll see if that works. Launching test DOS box. Okay. No file or directory. All right. Run dot test dot sh. So that runs that. Um, and then we're going to, we don't care about std in or std out, but we're going to just do p equals that. Then we're going to do like sleep for five seconds and then p dot kill, I guess. I don't know if kill is a real thing. Can Python not kill things? Um... Let's see, how do you kill something in Python? Firefox, please. Aha, almost got me with the restart. Um, sub process, we're going to run, run. Oh, it waits for it to complete. All right. Um, I don't think we can wait for it to complete if we use run. Um, we'll use popen instead. Uh, popen, then we'll sleep, and we have the process, I think. Um, and popen, that should return a sub process. Yes, Popen. Um, let's see. So, proc. Where did I, where'd my code go? So, proc, and then how do, what can we do? Can we run kill? Yeah, proc.kill. Nice. So let's see if that works. And sleep is not defined. Python 3, import os, os.sleep1. Import time, time.sleep2. Okay, so it's in the time module. Import time. Okay. Um, I'm going to run test.py. That should kill it in a few seconds. No. Um, we'll just do a kill. What signal is sig term? I think it's 15. Uh, signal at sig term. We want to tell it to gracefully terminate. 
um, signal. Kill takes one positional argument, but two were taken. Two were given. Maybe I need to give it the signal instead of kill. Um, it looks like Dotsbox doesn't care about my facts nor my feelings. Has... okay. All right. <sighs> okay. Um, proc dot kill. Do we have a kill function down here? Can we change the signal? On pose XOS is the function said sig kill. So perhaps we should try terminate. And then we'll sleep. Um, and then run kill, I guess. I don't know. That's dangerous. Don't write dangerous code. It's not killing it. Uh, kill 70440. That works. Um, oh, damn it. No. Oh, is this because it's a flat pack? No. What? Uh, flat pack kill instance. Okay, so when we run flat pack run, we have to get the instance. All right, we're going to have to call flat pack run from in here. So this is going to be flat pack run. And I guess the arguments would be, I don't know. Run, run, run. I mean, I'm okay with it, I guess. So let's see if this works. These are the arguments. And then we'll just see if that works. And then I guess we'll have to use flat pack to uh, deal with it. Um, and then I guess proc is gonna go out of scope and get garbage collected. So let's just do a time.sleep5. And we'll see if this works. Buff size must be an integer. What the fuck? Um, Python subprocess p open. Okay. So we actually specify the arguments as the entire thing. Got it. All right. So that runs it. Um, we're going to kill that. Uh, flat pack help. Um, flat pack run help. Um, and we're going to do kill process when the parent process dies. No. Um, branch to use runtime. Runtime commit. Parent pid. All right, um, let's just see if this actually takes the terminate signal. Dot, dot terminate, and then we'll sleep for another five seconds. I will sleep for one second, who cares? No, it don't care. You know what, let's print proc.pid and then just sleep for a hundred seconds or so and just see what pit it's trying to actually signal. It doesn't print it. Buddy, why are you not printing? 
why you're not printing. And also, let's just pipe in this junk um, std out. We're going to pipe std out to um, null. std out equals, can we just drop it? Dev null. There. Maybe that'll give us some cleaner output. Dev null is not defined, so it's probably in OS. What's you do? What? Subprocess.dev null. New in version 3.3. I have 3.9. Oh, I have to specify it, right? Oops. And that doesn't do anything. It does nothing. It does nothing. Oh, did I set STD error? Or STD, no, it should be STD air. Good, clean. We have the process number 71279. Um, so we're looking for process. I'm not going to inject anything. 71279. Remember that for me, chat. 71279. And that runs BRAP. What happens if we send a signal to BRAP? Kill, term, and that does nothing. So BRAP does not give a shit about my signals. It does not pass them on. It does not care. Um, thank you, BRAP. So now what we're going to do... Wait, 8, 9. Did I kill bubble wrap, but not the actual program running? No, 7, 1, 2, 8, 9. Um... Oh, Firefox is a snap on this system. Maybe that explains why it's a little slow. 71289. So, hmm. Flatpak kill process. Oh, I shouldn't do all that on this. All right, one second. Flatpak kill process. I really would be happy if it would pass down my uh, stuff. Okay, so flat pack doesn't actually. All right, I like that. All right. So flat pack doesn't know that it's running DOSBox. It runs an entire set of processes, which is good. All right, I'll give it that. That's clean. Um, so everything inside the flat pack gets destroyed. So what we're going to do is we're going to run flat pack kill instead. Yeah. So we're going to sleep for a little bit after we run it. And then it's going to kill all my DOS boxes. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, flat pack run. Can we specify an instance or a nonce or something? 
I know we just looked at this, but um, let's see. Instance ID FD. Sure, let's do that. Um, let's open a new file descriptor. Um, my FD equals, it's going to be a pipe. Um, yeah, let's create a pipe in Python for this. Um, okay, Python pipe. Wait, parent pid. No, Python os.pipe. Is that still okay to use? I don't know if the Python police have decided that we can't use pipes anymore. The new file descriptor is non-inheritable. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we can change that. So my fd.os.pipe, um, we'll set that to uh, in out uh, pin and pout. We're gonna set Wait, pipes aren't, pipes are bi-directional on Unix, but on Linux, but we're not gonna assume that they are. Pipe, read, write. Okay. Read, write. Set inheritable. Um, is that a bool? Set inheritable FD inheritable. What is inheritable? Inheritable flag. What's the inheritable flag mean? What, do, what do, is it just one? Is it a bool? I guess we'll put true. And then we'll run that and we would tell it that um, where is it? Instance ID FD instance ID FD and then we'll write I guess just write that should make it an integer right um, and then we'll do um, instance equals os dot read um, p read. I think os dot read will automatically buffer stuff, not buffer. os dot read. Read at most n. Sure, we'll read at most. <sighs> 512, I guess. I don't know what the ID is. Uh, print dot instance um, s, I guess. Instance. Then we sleep for a little bit. Then we run a flat pack kill help and instance. All right, let's see how well this runs. And then we want to close that freaking pipe os.close p right uh, p read there all right let's see if this works selected string bytes or path like object so how do i i think i just do string there for the file descriptor that'll turn it Okay, so it's not, it's not saying anything. So it's hung waiting for Flatpak to tell us what the instance is, but it does not. Why not? It says it's number four. 
instance ID FD for. Have I got them swapped around somehow? Instance. Write the instance ID string to the given file descriptor. Yes, I want that. Okay, time to S trace this. Um, all right, now let's check this. So we have a whole bunch of logs here from all the processes. So we're going to do grep instance ID FD um, log dot whatever. So it's running that with bubble wrap. Is it because I put it? Okay, I put it before the command. Oops. That seems like it could work better. All right, let's try again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it pipes it, reads it, reads it. What are you waiting for? Okay, let's try running this all manually. All right, so. Let's open a file descriptor in bash. Or we'll just use std out. So flat pack run instance id fd. Uh, I'll put that to two. Um, com dot dos box x dot dos box. X. Jukes, if you just ate a nice hamburger, you'd Galaxy Max and get this done in 10 minutes flat. I, I understand that. Wait, it wants me to do equals? How about I just don't delete all the STD out for now? Oops. Okay, we're gonna go delete the end of the line there. There. Failed to write to instance ID FD invalid argument. Ooh. What if I set them both to be inheritable? What if I set it to, what if I give it P read instead? Failed to write to instance ID invalid argument. Why? I guess we need to S trace this. All right, S trace test.py. What does it do? It clones it. It closes it. Uh, S trace ff, I guess. So it writes to descriptor three, and I guess that's the ID.
and that returns eight or something. What? Some right is going wrong, and I hate it. Uh, Python inheritable file descriptors. Python pipe inheritable. OS pipe should return inheritable file descriptors. I guess they're not inheritable on Windows. Or pipes are not. Make newly created file descriptors. No. Okay, so this is a pep or something. Yep, I get it. I get that the security vulnerabilities. How do I, how do I create a pipe? Wait, wouldn't subprocess have this? Can't, can't I, am I, oh, should I be passing a file descriptor to subprocess because it's like spawn or something? Um, let's see, P open. Pass FDs, great. Pass FDs equals, hey, young Zeneca Ta, what's up? I remember you. How you doing? We did it, Reddit. We did it. And we killed it. Good. We've done it. Reddit, we did it. Program you some damn money, boy? No. Okay. So we have the stuff to launch DOSBox. So let's just call this launch DOSBox. Both of you did it. I'm proud of you both. And so launch DOSBox is just going to return um, I think it's subprocess, not dev now. Launching test DOSBox, got instance S, and then we'll return instance. And then um, black pack equals launch DOSBox. And then we'll do def kill DOSBox. You know what? Let's just keep instance as a global variable. No, let's not do that. Um, instance. And then we'll just do this. All right. So does this work? Why did I change both? I thought I changed this one to... Uh, Subprocess. Got unexpected keyword subprocess. Subprocess. I changed the keyword instead of the actual thing. Okay, well, why is that still. Alright. STD air equals subprocess dot dev now. And I didn't specify the right argument there. There we go. 
Um, nice. So we've got an instance here and we've got our file descriptor. Nice. Where is that for coming from? Oh, that's the descriptor there. So we've managed to launch DOSBox. Um, what we will do now is SDL video driver equals dummy. And we'll just test if we can launch it headless. Yeah, all right. So let's set SDL video driver to dummy in our launch. Um, OS. Can we just set the environment like this? This is kind of hacky, but I don't care. Uh, all right, so where's the env stuff? Env equals none. So what happens if we just need to pass env? How do I get the environment to modify it? Python get environment. No, os.environ, all right. So let's just do env equals os.getEnviron plus sdl video driver equals dummy. Can I add, that seems like a dictionary, right? Can I just add dictionaries like that in Python? <laughs> Let's see. OS.getEnviron, it would be OS.environ, wouldn't it? Oh, it's its own thing. OS.getEnviron, OS.environ. Okay. Uh, environment. OS dot environment is a mapping object. OS dot in, okay, so do I just manually write to it? Okay, so we're launching DOSBox and that's working okay. Grr, 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 grr. How do you like that? Kind of. Um, so it runs it. So for now, let's just set this to be off so we can see what it's doing. And so we're going to open a local port, um, Python sockets, so I can Google how to do this. What is this weird opinion guide? Socket programming how to. What's the socket library? Python socket library. I know how to program sockets. Um, should I be using sockets? Socket server? Uh, we'll just use sockets. All right. Okay, make me a socket, please. Socket, please. All right, we want to make an AF INET socket, I think. All right. So. We're going to bind to, all right. Um, so flat pack launch DOSBox. First thing we're gonna do though is bind, um, 
bind socket and we're just going to make socket a global variable and then we're going to do import socket socket dot socket socket is socket dot socket and all of those look fine uh, for defaults um, then we're going to run create server I guess um socket dot create server um and we're going to run it with the address of 127.0.0.1 it's loop back of course um 6666 family yeah it's all fine okay so i don't need to create a socket for that i can just run that Great. Created socket. And then we're just going to put the I there for the socket. And then we do bind socket. And that'll get cleaned up by Linux when we die. Um, I suppose we should uh, unbind socket. Just to be sure. Socket dot close, I suppose. Okay, let's try this. Local variable socket referenced before assignment. What? Oh, I should change that to sock. Because we use socks for sockets. An integer is required, got string. Oh, that's right. We need to specify um, an address created by I think we have to do inet address. Let's see how we create an address. Host port. I mean, that seems like a fine, oh, the port, of course, not the host. Number is required, not a socket. Let's just represent that. Number is required, not a string. Why can I not figure this out? Okay, created socket, yeah. None type has no attribute close. That's right, we have to use global variables. That's probably better to not use global variables, right? Because of issues like this. And then we'll just do created socket, return sock, and then we'll have sock there. And then we'll do sock equals bind socket. Uh, we'll just make a main function for this. And then we'll run main. Okay, let's try this. All right. So it actually connects now. Um, and now we're going to do our tests. And it's after we sleep for, say... Um, We'll just launch DOSBox and then we'll do run tests socket. So def sock, uh, def run tests socket. We will run um, sock.write hi. Uh, sorry, we need to accept a connection, don't we? Um, con equals connect, sorry, accept socket. So we need to accept a connection on the socket. Um, accept socket. 
bucket.accept. I guess we can just return the value from that. Um, then we can just do con.write hi. Um, then print con.read. That should probably be bytes. I'm just guessing in the dark here at what these should be. Uh, this is probably going to completely failed. Except socket requires a socket. Yeah, I get it. Except socket requires a positional. Okay, I didn't pass sock to it. Tuple has no attribute right. So what do we actually get when we do accept? Con address. So we don't care about the address at all. Um, the address is useless to us. So we're just going to do con. Uh, then just dump the second argument. We don't need that. Let's do test. Socket has no attribute right. That's right. So it should be socket send and socket dot receive. Um, so let's do send data. Yeah. So that should be fine. Let's see. All right, so we've managed to read and receive some stuff. So what we're going to do now is do or I in range zero, uh, sorry, one to a hundred. We're going to do string equals, um, sorry, text equals a times I, and then we'll send text and then we'll receive um i guess 512 yep yeah. um um echo equals connection dot receive and then we'll do um if text doesn't equal echo print no echo and then we'll just print um, trying case I. And then we'll just put I there. Not a one. What? Okay, so 50. Huh? Some of these are hanging. So 88 hangs. So we'll have to have a timeout there. Um, we should probably also change this from, I don't know, we should try, we should try looping through which byte it is. So A, um, so let's just do if I is even, then we'll just use A, else it'll be B. And that way we don't like accidentally read the wrong stuff. And we'll try and read up to like something insane, like uh, five to five thousand bytes. Um, and we want to do a timeout too. Um, and then if we timeout, we close. Receive. Receive. Flags. So flags should be um, I don't know, let's just do an alarm timeout. We'll just do sig alarm, huh? Uh, 
Oh, that's a lot of junk. All right. Uh, big SIGs, yeah. Um, let's just see if receive has a timeout. Oh, we're supposed to be using select. Um, Should we use select on on a socket? How much do I smoke? None. All right, let's just do select then. Um, so we send it and then we do select dot select and we're going to read um, con. Otherwise, we're going to read nothing nothing and the timeout will set to i don't know five seconds um uh r list w list x list if r list equals con then we'll echo it uh otherwise we're just going to print timed out and then we will shall return. Okay. I don't need health boost. Smoking is not a health boost. What is wrong with you? Great. I didn't import select. What is the select timeout? Timeout is what? Seconds? Floating point number in seconds? What? Okay. We're not going to do that. All right, test. Good for COVID joke, get vaxxed and wear a mask for protection. Yeah. All right, so here's our boy. This tests input and output. Um, and we're going to, yeah. We should probably scramble the A, B stuff. Um... But whatever, we'll worry about that later. Right now we can just see that case 89 is timed out. So obviously it can't accept stuff bigger than 89 bytes. Let's set SDL video driver to go like this. Yeah, so this is our test. It times out at 56. So let's set the timeout to be a bit bigger just in case it hangs a little bit. So we have our test thing. And we can see that it times out with 89 uh, bytes. And now we can tweak stuff to see is there a way to get it bigger? And how do we deal with buffering things that are large? Uh, let's say that the limit is going to be, I don't know, 512 or something, whatever. We'll worry about that first. But the idea is that this should work um, up to 
512 or something, not 89. So the first thing we're going to do is try and figure out why it's set to 89. So we're going to change variables around. So bot, uh, sorry, test. Um, so we also have the log file to read, which is good. So we have test.log, uh, character encoding, current local. Did that not save properly? No, it's just bad stuff. Okay, so let's try, we're gonna, in this terminal, um, do the stuff to make the uh, tests and stuff. So TCP live w make clean. Be right back cleaning, pathetic. We're here to fix slurp, not to clean. That should also be all.coms. So we're going to go into TCP lib and we're going to start looking at the buffer sizes. And I think the issue here was that the buffer size that's big, but let's just try changing that to two. So big buff and that'll be two. Does that change the outcome? Right now it's building, so we're going to just be waiting a little bit. Okay, so now let's run the test again. So that was not the case. It's not the case that the buffer is being constrained here. So what happens when we get an input that's too big? Um, let's read that log again and try and make some sense of it. Vim test.log. So at the start, it decides that we have an MTU of 576 and MSS of 536. So what we should probably do is adjust the MTU to be equal to what the network hardware. I guess in this case, the network hardware is um, that. So we're actually gonna go here and we're gonna change the MTU. Yeah, 576, we'll leave it like that. 576 bytes isn't bad. You know, let's just comment that out for now. And DOSBox test.config set the MTU to 576. What happens if we don't set the MTU there? Um, and we do W make just to make sure. And then we do a test after the W make. No, it still hangs at 89. Yes, and it timed out. We didn't set an MTU there. 
and we didn't set an MTU there. So I'm guessing this is not limited by the MTU, but instead by the buffers that I've changed. Um, Cause 89 is pretty small, right? So TCP max XMIT buffs. Let's try looking at the MTCP stuff then. Not that one in the uh, code mtcp.configuration. So packet buffer length is 128 plus 14. Let's change that to 500. And yeah, let's do double you make, I guess. I didn't, I didn't, uh, let's go into turbo mode for this. Okay. That's too turbo. I can't type anything. W make and then turbo is, uh, there's no key bind for that. Um, yep. Yeah. Emulate CPU speed. I guess this is all fine. How am I doing? Good. So we're changing packet buffer length and we're also going to think about our test code in general. Um, because the idea is that we have a buffer and the maximum buffer is the maximum we're going to take in or let out and anything after that is going to get dropped. Which sucks, but it's something we're going to have to do to save size in the executable. Uh, in memory. But the important part here that we don't know is how to define this amount. Because right now it's being defined um, somewhat arbitrarily. So 500. Oh, wait, I didn't set the test long enough. My bad. Whoops. Vim test.py. Um, we're going to Try going up to a thousand. So putting it at 500 causes it to kind of peak at 400 or something. I don't know. Um, 447. What if we set it to 400? Would that be 347? W make. Yes, with lots of W's. Why is it not finding any bot files? Object bot. Oh, that's because it's not building it. All right. Hang on. We should always build our bot. We're three hours in and we're getting a bit close to like the idea of the single variable that seems to change or limit things. Um, what we'll do in a second is we'll see if we put the MTU of, uh, of MTP, MTCP underneath this maximum variable, will that ensure that we have something that isn't going to overflow or whatever? We shall have to see. All right, so let's do the test again now that we've changed that. And it might be 347 if it's somehow consistent or something. Oh, 
Okay, so there's just some overhead, I guess. So what we're going to do is try and calculate it. So it's uh, Python 3. So 100 minus 47 is 53 bytes of overhead. Um, let's just search up that magic number. TCP 53 bytes. Um, 53 bytes overhead. Um, I don't see anything immediately. So let's just say plus 53 and then put a note 53 is overhead to get um, packet buffer length in TCP buffer. So we'll say we'll go up to 500 in this and let's just check that it's not like over allocating anything. So if we go to TCP lib um, tcp.cpp What's packet buffer length do? Grep packet buffer lengths. Okay, so that's used in packets. <laughs> Obviously. So packet buffers times the packet buffer length. Um, and then the TCP max sockets and max XMIT buffs. Okay, this should be fine, I guess. Um, right, so now we're gonna try setting the MTU to say 100, or no, 200, to give us some kind of wiggle room. And we'll see if we have to set it in both the MTC configuration or the other file, the um, DOSBox and MTCP, and if Slurp respects it or something. And let's just do test now. So based on what we've got here, um, we set the packet buffer length to 500 plus 53. So it should be able to do 50, uh, 500 max, but the MTU should limit it to 200. Um, something strange happened. No echo happened. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, do we need to set MTU? It could be that Slurp is having a hard time with that. So let's try and set mtcp.configuration, not this one, but the larger one, to also have an MTU of what was it? 200. And then we run the tester again. We should also investigate the case of one not having the other. Huh? So setting the MTU here Okay, so let's just delete the one in the DOSBox configuration and just go with the, we'll look at the test in a minute. Um, so let's see how much it can do. Our predictions are not coming true, which means we have an error in our understanding of how this works. And we should probably correct that error, yeah? Yeah, so. We set MTCP to 200. It times out at 161. Is that consistent? So 
Leave it in? No. Should we be adding our magic overhead? So should... Hmm. If we set the MTU to 500... Is... Uh, where's our MTCP configuration that I keep not wanting to do? Currently, it's at 500 plus 53 for a packet. So 500 here should equal 500. Ideally. Unless there's some overhead that we don't understand. Up we go. Four hundred and sixty one. So we have enough space for something that can go up to five hundred, but the MTU is five hundred. Uh, so does the MTU need to be Um, let's see. Five hundred minus four hundred sixty one means we have some kind of overhead of thirty nine. So let's try doing that. Not look at the test log. Okay, and then if we set the MTU too high, such as 600, it will be limited by uh, whatever. I don't know what to call it. The, the, the uh, trash heap. It seems like we don't need to set the MTU for slurp. Possibly? Possibly not. Not sure. What's happened here? It's hung. Um, I guess it doesn't want comments there. MTU 600. So this should only go up to 500. Or not? Can we put it back to 539 and see what happens? It's hung? What? Okay, so let's start writing up our to-do thing here. Do we still have that open? I mean, it thinks it's open somewhere. Process ID. So we'll just delete that. So we can say that the, in order to get a packet of size X, packet buffer len must be X plus 53. MTU must be X plus 39. TCP packet payload X. What if we set it to 639? 
Um, that's not working too well. Let's just run it from our DOS box here. Toss. Failed to create TCP buffers. So why would it do that? Is MTU affecting... Five, seven, six. Does MTU, does the bat, does the buffer have to be equal to or larger than MTU? So let's try and try that to 540. Let's close that. Um, and let's do bot and we'll just do, um, I guess you can try running the test here. No, that seems like it can be larger. So MTU is 540 there, which should be 501, right? We could probably start from the range of 400 um, and see. So what values for MTU are okay? So 539 means that the packet buffer is that. So what is the TCP buffer size that we cannot have if it cannot allocate the TCPs? Is it MSS to advertise? So buff size times XMIT buffs. So we have, how many XMIT buffs do we have? TCP max XMIT buffs, which is 20. XMIT buffers. It doesn't seem to say it gave us an error before, so let's go by that error. So we set it to 600. So MTU can be bigger. MTU can be bigger than packet buffer length. So we're trying to figure out the relationship between these two. So let's run, I guess, test again. Failed creating TCP buffers. So is that in failed creating? It should be in the log file that we don't look at. Mem alloc on TCP buffers. Need 1272. So. mem alloc so temp size is the size of xmit buffs xmit buffs pointer times buff size so we need a buffer of so our buffer is big buff which is that so what we could do um, big buff must be, we found a relationship uh, here. So we have big buff and big buff must be equals, what's temp size? So xmit buffer p, where's that defined? In it. So we can actually figure this out right here. So the buffer size I assume is, um, let's just divide this by uh, eight, uh, four, two, six, three, six, no, maybe it's four or three. It's asking to initialize how many buffers by default. Oh, param too big limit need you. Maybe the log will actually tell us some more stuff if we read it for once. 
um, test.log. Allocated one socket, MTU 600, MSS is under the MTU, which is good. Allocated one socket. All right, so let's just divide this by stuff. So divided by one, obviously too big. Divided by two, 636. Is that somehow related? Let's just uh, instrument this code. Um, I would guess that the answer is two. 600. That's just enough. That's just not enough. Oh, sorry. So what if the MTU is, I don't know, 636. Wait, is that related to the 36? I think I remember that we have, no, that's 39. So 539. Let's actually undo this here. 539 times two is 1078. Is that going to allocate 1078? So our prediction here is that we should set an MTU that is divisible twice by big buff. And so big buff is 1224 plus eight. Uh, one, two, three, two divided by two. So the maximum there is 616. And so 616 minus 39, that would be 577. So big buff must be MTU times two. MTU, wait, no, no, that's wrong. Uh, I did the order wrong. So it should be 600, uh, 539 times two, it should be 1224 plus eight divided by two minus, no, that should be right. Maybe it's 576. Oh, well, that's a magic number there. That sounds magic enough, doesn't it? Obviously not. Five, seven, five. Okay, this isn't very scientific. Um, so what we're going to do now is just take that MTU and we're going to look at how it allocates um, the init thing. So let's go to TCP lib, grep, TCP buffer init. That would be in utils and xmit buffers. What's xmit buffers? In its stack, sockets and xmit buffers. So in the test IO program, we do in its stack one TCP socket ring size. So two. So big buff should equal um, I guess the MTU, no, um, I guess the size of the TCP data times the TCP ring socket data plus the overhead of TCP buffer. Um, I'm not sure what the overhead of TCP buffer is. Um, What's size of TCP buffer? No, wait. The buff size is the size of 
Okay, so it would be two times the MSS um, plus TCP, TCP buffer times MSS. And temp size is the number of buffers slash buff size. And buff size is the size of the buffer plus that. Okay. So TC buffer size, what is this? I mean, we can probably guess by reading a log where it works, right? Um, let's just set the MTU back down to 539. Then we can run our test and see it work. Yeah, no, nah. no, nah, mate. Oh yeah, it does work. Okay. So we'll let that run and then we'll look at the test log. So MTU 539, MSS is 549. So we don't know what MSS is. The TC buffer is, I don't know, what's the size of packet buffer? We should figure that out, right? Um, TCP ink, TCP.h, packet buffer, TCP buffer. Where are you, TCP buffer? It is It's something we're going to figure out ourselves. Um, let's go to our test code, uh, our test bot, test DOS box, and we'll just print at the start some of this stuff. We should probably have it calculate uh, what stuff it needs to be. So we're going to print size of TCP buff, uh, TCP buffer. I think that's what it is. TCP buffer. Equals I, and that would be size of TCP buffer. And then we'll open up our thing and we'll run tost. So 76. The TCP buffer is 76. So that's how much memory we need for the um, stuff. So that should be um, 2 times 76 plus 499 equals 1150. So can we change that now just to confirm that um, 1150, that goes to 1224. So let's change that to 115, 1149. And then we'll just do wmake clean. And we'll do wmake test dot com. How is the MSS calculated? That's a question I'm going to ask myself because no one else is asking things. TCP socket manager plus MSS to advertise. TCP 
Okay, so MSS is that. Um, it's the maximum segment size is my MTU minus the size of the IP header plus size of TCP header. And TCP buffer equals 76. So there's a relationship directly between the buffer size here and MTU and packet buffer length. What is the relationship there? We want to find out. Well, let's just see if this is built. No. Ah, uh, yeah. No. All right. So packet buffer length. BIM packet.cp. And we have another fake malloc there, but that's, defi that's defined by stuff, I think. Plus it's got plus eight at the end. I don't know what's up with that. Um, packet buffer length. And so buffer in it gets the storage buffer fs so that gives us the buffers now what is the relationship do these buffers here are these packet these are packet buffers yes do they include What do they include? So that's a question we'll have to ask. We know how MSS is linked to big buff there, but we still don't know much about packet buffer lengths, even what is a packet buffer. And we know what an MTU is. So let's say MTU is what? So ideally we'll spit out, say, what size big buff should be what size the packet buffer length should be. And we have to figure out why the MTU is related to plus 39. Um, but we'll see. Because for some reason it's freezing instead of erroring that it doesn't have a buffer that big. But uh, let's see, test. So test does not work if the buffer size is that. But uh, if we set it to, um, sorry, we'll just add one, 150, 1150. Have I tried putting it in the microwave? No, I haven't, Kaz. No, I haven't. Okay, so yes, that has a direct relationship there. If we want to change the amount of MTU that our program can handle, we have to set big buff to um, the MSS uh, or whatever. So, um, next is the packet payload and how that relates. Um, like I can understand how this relates. There's a pretty kind of obvious correlation, but we don't know what's stored in packet buffer and how that relates to the MTU. So let's open up. We have packet buffer length there, which is 500 plus 53. But the MTU has to be plus 39. So we might actually just have to start um, setting the MTU and start messing with the buffer length until it can fit properly. Because we want an MTU to be able to handle packets. Well, no. Hmm. 
let's say we have MTU of 500. What is, uh, let's open up Wireshark. An MTU of 500 should give us a payload of 500 minus the, um, amount that we have, correct? 500 uh, minus the overhead. So let's see, can we count the bytes in a packet after it's sent the uh, last packet? This might take a little bit. 500, uh, 460. So an MTU of 500 causes 460. MTU 500 equals 460 TCP payload. So what's the overhead there? 40 bytes, yes. I think, uh, Python 3, so 500 minus 440, or is it 460? 40 bytes overhead. So if we go to Wireshark, we can see we sent that and the TCP stuff, everything up to the data, the data starts at byte 50. The ethernet is dropped, I think. Byte 14. Where does this, where does this correlation between 460 and 500 come from? The packet, for, okay, 460, the entire packet here is, hmm. We don't actually see the packets, do we? Um, what we could do, no, we couldn't do that. That'd be silly. So, 460 overhead, that's 40 bytes. So what starts at 40 bytes or whatever? The, the packet here is 527. Wait, is this the one that worked? No. Then we got the AA back and we sent the AA. So the one that works is 526. A packet that is 526. So packet 526 equals 460 TCP payload, but that's outside the MTU. There's not a one-to-one -one relationship mapping here between slurp and whatever. Uh, Let's see, what if we start hmm, just printing the actual, the full packet? Or the packet size? We know what the packet size is, I think. We have the size of the IP header, and size of the TCP header. Um, IP header is, 20 bytes, TCP header is 32 bytes. 20 plus 32 is not 40. Um, this is not the, this is not the packets that, these are not the actual packets that we see inside the machine. Okay. Hmm. We should be able to see them with the trace though, right? The, uh, what's tcp.d? I don't know. The test log. Character encoding. Current local. Retry. I know Western. Retry. Okay. So, 
time to try to enqueue oversized segment. So that might be an output thing and the segment is bigger than the input. So the segment there, the 460 is the segment. So, ah, so what you can send is limited to 460. Okay. So M2500 can only send up to the MSS. So how do we confirm that we're actually able to get in um, the amount of packets, like uh, not the amount of packets, how do we confirm that we're able to get the amount of bytes in? We can confirm that um, the MSS is what limits us with the output. And the MSS is, of course, based on MTU. But the ideal MTU of 500 should be able to get us in um, what amount? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, but also that means the packet buffer length, TCP packet buffer length, X plus 53. Um, we'll not worry about this weird 39, but why is packet buffer length um, plus 53? Or X plus 53? No, that shouldn't... Uh, It shouldn't make sense. What we will do is see how packet buffer lengths. Hmm. I don't think we're hitting the packet buffer length issue here. If we have the correct amount for output. Although is packet buffer length a packet buffer that we're able to send? Okay, so packet buffer length is incoming and MSS is outgoing. Okay, so what we shall do, can MTCP specify the correct MSS? Sorry, um, can we set the MSS in whatever? Let's not worry about that. Um, what we shall do is edit our bot, our test program, to instead not send a packet, but uh, send a buffer. So SN printf. Um, we'll send size i dot, um, and then we'll put that in the actual buffer here. And that's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, that's probably like, we'll just put 16 there. And then we won't try and send anything outside that. So this will just report how much it can actually handle. And what we shall do for that is first of all, let's run TOST to update it. And hang on. Right, I probably need to put in the length there. I think I'm using SN printf wrong. Okay, yeah, so the size N goes here. Okay. Error, error. Functional arguments do not match those. What call car unsigned car const? Um, You know what? I think that's why it should be printing to data. Um, 
Uh, we'll change that just to car. We'll cast that pointer. And we'll see if this works. Okay, so now let's find our test program again. And it's not going to actually... Sorry, is it up here? Is it up here in this directory? No. So it's not going to check that um, it gets back the same stuff. In fact, we're just going to print um, the echo instead to see what it's received. So this should test the maximum that it can deal with. So let's do that. That didn't print it properly. That didn't print it properly. I need to print what we received. What? Size 136 got N. Okay, yeah, so that's actually got trailing bytes after it. That's fine. Here we go. So it's telling us the amount of bytes that it's managed to receive correctly. And so this should be maybe 460, 480. But this should be closer to the MTU than the MSS. Oh. So it managed to get up to the MSS, up to the MTU. So MTU equals, wait, what? The length here is payload length minus the header length. So that says it managed to get 500, uh, which is more than it should be able to handle. Like if we set this to 480, will it do the same thing? We shouldn't be able to receive more than 500 bytes. Unless we need to specify MRU as well. Okay, so the MTU does not affect what we can receive. Can we set an MRU that does? It doesn't look like it. So what affects what we can receive? Perhaps the buffers? I mean, I know if we set the slurp MRU, well, it's at 500 now, which is 500 bytes plus the overhead, which is the packet buffer length here. That's exactly what it is. Um, if we set this to 400 and we do, I guess, wmaketest.com, um, then this should be um, maximum input equals packet buffer length minus 53 maximum output maximum TCP output is um, big buff so we're getting a closer idea of what variables are affecting our ability to do things um, I don't think, yeah, no. 
So what is that 53 from? Packet buffer length. It's not the 76 of the TCP buffer. Um, 53. Let's look at Wireshark again. So bytes 62 to what? 62 to 65. Um, so where is 63 coming from? Perhaps we should start printing the actual size of the uh, IP buffer that we get back. Um, we'll write size I would be the IP payload length. Is there a relationship that's clear with the IP payload length? We'll see in a little bit, perhaps. Let's run the test again. So it shows us the it shows us how much it's gotten with the IP buffer. Does it drop the Ethernet buffer? Or is that in the packet driver? So we set over here in tcp.cpp. Or the packet buffer length is 400 plus 53. So for a payload of 400, there's an overhead of 19. Which, okay, the overhead is 19. Um, so what's size of IP header plus size of TCP header? I mean, obviously, uh, if we go here, buff plus size of TCP header and buff is, sorry, no, the length is the payload length minus the TCP header length. So if we add that header length, we get um, the thing that's removed from this equation is the TCP header. Wait, what? Let's think about this. So we send a payload of 399. So that would be 399 plus the header length. Okay, so the header length must be 420. So 20. So the TCP header length is 20. TCP header is 20. So that makes sense. Um, now if we go here, the buffer length, um, 53 minus 20 is still Thirty-three. So, what else is going into that packet? Um, it's time to read some code. Why am I using Virgin GCC? I'm not. I'm using Whatcom, Chad Whatcom. Buffers FSI. So what is buffers FS? Free list implemented as a stack. So there's a ring buffer of buffers. So where are the buffers used? Receiver, 
Um, buffer packet temp. So when it receives something, it puts it in the buffer, obviously, um, in an interrupt context. What is in the buffer though? Let's see. What gets put in the buffer? Buffer packet temp. Buffer buffer next equals buffer packet temp. Oh, okay. So buffer buffer next buffer. I feel like masculine scent that only a Chad could have. What? Let's scroll down and read this. So packet in it, packet release, packet send, packet process. So it DQs the packet here. And what does it do with this packet? If the protocol equals six, eight or six or eight. So bytes 13 and 14 specify what protocol it is. Um, so ARP is 806 and IP is 800. So where is that? 800 is here at where? 12 and 13. So 12, 13, and over here it says 13 and 14. Packet 12 and packet 13, okay. Packet 12 and packet 13. Do you think this Chad would go out with you? I don't know. Probably. Uh, packet third, packet 12 and 13. So that makes sense. Protocol equals packet six. So what is that stripping off? Uh, six means seven in C, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. Is it stripping off the source ethernet address? Yes. It's, it's stripping off the ethernet address, I think. So if we add the ethernet address, which is six. So 53... So 53 minus 20, which gives us an overhead of 30. Um, so 53 equals TCP header minus ethernet, which is gonna be six. Uh, then the IP header is going to be around, I don't know, how big is the IP header? 20 bytes. So we remove 20 then. And there's still seven on top. What if we don't remove? No. Okay. So we keep the header. There's a 13 byte overhead. Yeah, I'm having fun. So to get, okay, an ethernet frame is how big? Let's say 14, 14. Hmm. It almost seems like there's a byte being dropped here. What? 
All right, let's search up the packet driver interface. It seems like something is... The header that we get is not um, exactly what we want. Um, is this going to tell us about it? Packet driver interface. So programming interface, the driver info, access type, release type, send type, send packet, get address, get parameters. So what happens with the buffers we give it? Buffer. The Mac header and all the received data, but not the trailing frame check sequence. Frame check sequence. What? Wait, 526, so there's a 26 byte overhead. What? Wait, hang on. So the payload is 460 bytes and the frame is 523, 63, and so we remove 40 for the IP stuff, and that gives us 23, and then we remove how much for the Ethernet? 14. Because the IP is 20 packets, isn't it? Yeah. And that gives us nine. What's the frame header? I guess there's just a nine byte overhead. Perhaps that's stuff that comes from uh, whatever's going on with the network card. Frame length, 526 capture length. So 526 bytes equals what? Well, we still don't know exactly how Slurp is handling things. So there's a nine byte overhead per packet in the buffer. Packet buffer length times um, plus nine. Let's say that. Packet buffer length plus nine. Um, packet equals so TCP packet X equals packet um, X plus 40. Yeah. Um, overhead. And we'll just put overhead is 40. And TCP buffer equals 76 for some reason. So we have some, some stuff here. So let's try and see if any of this makes sense. So we want to receive, say, what's a random number between one and, I don't know, 800 or so, 500, whatever, 600, uh, 428. So we want to receive 428. Um, 420, okay. We're going to receive a TCP of 420. So we'll add all our copying stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll, we won't worry about this actually. Um, we will have to split this up somehow. 
Uh, oh, we could just solve that actually. We can just enqueue two packets or whatever. Um, so packet, we'll worry about that in a minute. So 420, so what we do is 420 plus uh, 40 plus nine is 469. Um, so for our MTU, I believe we have to set the MTU to be 469. Um, hang on a second. Shit, I lost my notes. We still don't quite know how packet buffer lengths. I guess that implies the overhead. All right, so let's just go with this for now. We'll check some of our work. Maximum input equals that, and then we'll add 13 to it. 13 can be our magic number. Uh, we don't know where the 13 comes from, but uh, that's the number. Um, how does 13 apply to the MTU? The MTU and MTCP only affects the output, doesn't it? Okay, so the input we have here is packet buffer length minus 13. So 420 plus 13 means our packet buffer length should be 433. 433. Oh, and uh, the TCP IPO had 473. Now to send it back, um, we'll deal with that in a little bit, um, but to send it back, we will have to have um, a TCP buffer set to the MSS. So sending it back, we'll have to recalculate all that. So let's just try this for input. Oops. That's not in a DOS window, is it? Actually, we can establish a relationship between um, the MTU and the MSS. Um, actually, yeah, we can. So the maximum output equals um, MTU minus 40. So to get a packet um, of like 420 input we have to have at least that and 420 output we have to have at least that and we'll have to calculate big buff and the packet length size we might just have to define um, some variable in mtcp.config that we can read that seems readable, reasonable. Okay, so MSS, let's run our test bot. And this should give us, according to my calculations, um, a maximum of 420 or nothing, I guess. Or it might be just building it because I just ran wmake clean. So we'll give that a little bit. Did I ask my daughter for a phone book? She said, you're such a boomer and handed me her phone. Now the spider's dead and my daughter's phone is broken and she's really pissed at me now. <laughs> That's a boomer joke. Stop reading boomer Facebook. Will we get to 420 in? What do you think, Kaz? Off by one, off by one. So, oh. Does that mean the 13 is just a weird number that I've accidentally messed up? So 420. So let's go back to our thing here. It should be minus 12. 
Is that the size of an Ethernet header? 14 bytes. So no. 12 is the magic thing there. So let's add one to our whatever it is. Um, I think it's in packet.h. No, it's in mtcp.config. So 474 is 420 plus, uh, let's actually make a quick define. Um, define um, max TCP size. And we'll set that to 420. And this can be max TCP size plus 40 plus 12. And we'll do that. Size of maximum TCP payload to receive. and send. Twelve is magic number. Forty is IP plus TCP overhead. Okay. So we ran W make clean. Let's try running the test again. No, what about plus 11? Let's try that. W make it clean. One time I debated a, debated a flat earther, he got so mad that he stormed off saying he would walk to the edge of the earth just to prove me wrong. He'll come around eventually. Yeah. Eighteen. So is it plus 10? Do we need 50 bytes of overhead? No, it should be plus 13. 53 bytes. Or maybe it's plus 14. We also have to test... Um, Let's actually just start writing some packets in here. So we're going to do 419, 418, 419, 420, 421, 422, 421, 420, 419, 418. We want to make sure that it can deal with packets that... Um, are too big for it. An elderly couple is in the church. The wife says to the husband, I've let out one of those silent farts. What do I do? The husband says, charge the battery in your hearing aid. Rip in peace. That's not return there. So it manages to do 420 bytes with an overhead of 14. Neat.
So is this just dropping bytes now? Oh, it hangs the program. This isn't good. Uh, so once it gets too big of a packet, it dies, which is what hmm, that's what the MTU should prevent, right? So this is where we go to DOSBox and set the MTU to 420 and uh sorry the mru to 420 yeah Huh, weird. So 420 there. Oh, sorry, 420 plus uh, the TCP overhead, which is 420 plus uh, 60. And I think you need the Ethernet frame on top of that. Four eighty. What is happening here? Let's set the MTU MIU to five hundred. It's saying it gets way more than it should. What the heck? So slurp limiting is doing something to the packets. Oh, we have to add bytes to it. Okay, so 420 works, 421 does not work. 420 should work again. So if we change this to 480 on both sides, then this should still work, right? needs to be a bit bigger. So perhaps it needs to be plus 14. So 420 plus 40 plus 14. So that would be 420, 460, 480. Wait, no, 40 plus 40 is 80. 420 would be 460. So this would be 474 maybe? Let's try 490. So Slurp is adding another factor here. So 480, is that causing fragmentation? I think Slurp is fragmenting packets. Yeah, so let's try 484. What about 483? That would cut it down um, if that's going to fragment that. That 482. Four eighty one.
480. So it's 480 causing issues. Yeah, so 481. So that means slurp MRU at least. Um, slurp MRU must be plus 420 minus 481. So that's a 61 byte overhead. Um, minus 20, uh, 61 bytes. Sorry, 40 plus, what's 60 minus 40, 21? So there's a 21 overhead in slurp. I think, possibly, we don't know. Um, so ideally that should be fragmenting packets over 420. But instead it's timing out. In fact, if we set this to 450, it shouldn't have any issues. It is though. Why? It tries 422. What? Let's see, we'll go from 400 to 500. Sorry, 450 to 550. No, 4, 420 to 4, no, 410 to 430. So it stops at 416. I didn't do it, I'm still confused. So 415, 416, 415. Um, 414. Sorry, 430. Wait, what? Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Let's set this MRU back up to 481 because it's splitting otherwise. So it manages to receive 420 bytes. And then at 421 bytes, that's too many. 421 bytes is too many. Then what we're going to do is change that to 423. We're going to go to 430 to 410. Can we go backwards? No, range does not go backwards. Unless I can add like a step. Now, so let's see if it goes downwards like this. So what does an MRU even do? If smaller packets are requested, 
it must be able to receive the full octet information. Okay. So. Go on eBay. I'm not going on eBay. We have a lockup condition where we receive a packet that's too big and it's not dropping it. Now, I don't know what MRU with Slurp is doing, and we probably do need to set that. There is cool stuff on eBay, but not now. We're on the brink of, I don't know, like Yu-Gi-Oh cards? So let's see what happens here. We want to start fragmenting when we send 420 bytes. So let's say 480, 480. That should work, right? Wait, the MRU is now working? We're at 460. So that's maxing out at 440. So what about 470? So 470 gets this 440 bytes, which makes sense, I guess. What about 469? That doesn't matter. Um, what about 450? If we set it to under the whatever, it should be fine, right? Apparently not. 430, so let's do 459. So what happens here? We send 438 and it sends, uh, sorry, 418, 438, 419, 439, 420, 439. And then that adds on an additional one. So the slurp MTU should be plus 20? No, plus 40. So the slurp MTU is measured as whatever. I don't know. Slurf MTU equals TCP packet X plus 20. Sorry, 40. So that's the maximum receive unit of a TCP I packet. And then it starts splitting it. But then it starts locking up anyway. Is that because the receive buffers are too small? Did I just run clean? Yeah. Hmm. Did you play Yu-Gi-Oh? As a kid, I... Not the game, I'm uh, not the uh, card game, but the uh, whatever you call it, the Game Boy game. So it's only able to fragment up to size 22. So something horrible and nasty is happening here, but we kind of want this MRU there. So, slurp MRU must be 460. 
let's figure out MTU first. Uh, not first, but now. So MTU. To test that, we're going to have to put up our other stuff. So um, if we read our readme, I think we have maximum output is MTU plus 40. So we're going to have to set this up to uh, 50. In order to get 460 out. 420 back out. And the big buff, we're going to have to recalculate that properly. Um, so let's go to TCP lib, tcp.pp, and where's big buff? Equals jar two times TCP buffer equals 76. What's that? Size of TCP buffer plus my MTU minus overhead. Um, so let's do max TCP size. What's overhead? Yeah. So that should be fine and give us the ability to send packets that are that big. Um, so let's try that. Sorry, this should be min T. No, that is max TCP size. I don't know. Okay, let's go to test.py and we shall see. If I can find test.py, we shall see if it manages to. Sorry, we have to do the send test, um, which would be. Um, this, so just mem copies and set length to length. There we go. So we would expect this to be able to do, what would you say? Um, that says 426, but that's because we have the MRU messed up a little bit, I think, or the MTU. So let's undo those. We need to set the MTU here to 420 plus um, 60. So that should be 460. Okay, so that gives us 420 perfect. Now, if we change the buffer size to be negative one, will it cry? And now we need to test the slurp MTU relationship. I'm just going to assume that it's the TCP packet X plus 40. So let's just set this to 460. And so this should error if we run it because it can't allocate buffers and then we'll set it back and then see if slurp is going to fragment things. Oh, that buffer is too big. A buffer is big enough. Hmm. 
What if we remove 80? Or whatever. Am I not setting the MTU? What does it want the MTU to be? The MSS is 420. So the buffer is going to be two to two times size of TCP buffer plus the max TCP size. TCP size, which is going to be R. So what we can actually do there is change that to uh, 460 there. And then we're just going to change this to 420, 419. We should probably have different variables for that. But we won't worry about it. We'll just fix it now. It's getting pretty late. This is a long stream. Do you think we'll be able to figure out why it freezes and fixes it? Okay, so we set that to 420. Yeah, really? You have a lot of faith that I don't. Now let's run test.py. After this break, not this break, this, uh, this bit, this one, whatever this is. That's fragmenting pretty early. So let's remove slurps MRU, sorry, MTU and uh, control for that and see if that helps. That goes up to, wow, that's getting fragmented. What the heck? Is the MRU fragmenting that? Maybe I'll put the MTU at 576. Maybe I'll set it to 600. Maybe I'll set them both to 600. Because this is a little confusing. There we go. So 420. Let's set this down to 400, the maximum transmission unit, and see if that starts cutting stuff up. Yep. And so that should be 420 plus 40. That seems to hang stuff and time things out. So let's write this down in our notes. Um, two small MIU times out test. Uh, two big packets times out test. But let's continue on. Um, so maybe this needs to be 480. It looks like it might need to be 479. Although it's strange that it can send more than that. What is happening here? It should be stopping at 420.
let's just double check this. So no slurp stuff. This should stop at 420. Yes. But then if we add an MTU, what happens? It goes up. It starts fragmenting at 421. So it looks like it's going to fragment the packets. At four seven nine, so I guess. Yeah, so let's add that to our notes. So slurp MRU must be Python Python three four twenty plus forty four. 79 minus 60, sorry, 460, that's plus 19, I guess, whatever. So 479, and this should be 460. And that should... Okay, so that's fragmenting the input there. So if we don't fragment it and we set um, MRU to 500, what happens then? It, it times out around 425. And it starts fragmenting each time. No, wait, 421 is fragmenting there. So that should be 480. Four twenty one, yeah, that should be fine. So the slurp MTU is actually plus twenty. And the and the TCP uh, slip MTU is, I set that to 460. That starts um, cutting up packets way earlier. So we add 40 to that, which is 460. Uh, MTUs, wait, MTUs plus 20, and MIU is plus 40, so that should be 440, let's see if that works, so it might be 420, sorry, 480, what is the one? So 480 minus 420, what's that? 60. So the transmission wants, uh, the MIU has to be plus 60. And the MTU um, must be plus 40. Let's go back here, because the maximum size here is 60. So, 60 plus, I don't know, 440. Let's edit our test code back to um, simply output the size that it gets of a packet. And we'll assume that 460 
would be 500. Wait, MTU is 460 there. So does that mean MTCP's MTU is for, is that why it's cutting its, all right, hang on a second. We haven't thoroughly tested this yet. All right, back, back. We haven't controlled for the MTU there. So let's go back to this. MTU, we'll just leave that at, I don't know, 576. Wait, no, we have controlled. The MTU there is 460, which means the MSS is 420. Great, that is controlled, all good. So now if we go back to max TCP size, and the MTU can be 420, I'll just leave it at 460. 420 is fine. Um, now, MRU, uh, MTU, that was, what was it? 420 plus 80. That'd be 500, wouldn't it? What? Four twenty plus eighty. Are you sure it wasn't four eighty? Let's just check. Oh snap, hang on. to put this back up if we're going to be rebuilding. And change this back. So let's see. So it's fragments around 421, that's good. So it is plus 60. MTU is, what is MRU here? MTU is plus 60, great. And MRU is plus 40. No, MRU is just the TCP packet, isn't it? So we set it to, for 20 and All right, so it probably is 460. 420 plus 40. And MTCP's MIU, MTU equals. The same value, so. Packet X plus 40. Okay, looks good. Looks fine. So we have our MTCPs and MIUs figured out, all tuned for 420 at the moment. So now we have to figure out, sorry, all tuned for outputting a certain amount. So why is it freezing now? The maximum input here in MTCP is 460. So that is 420. All right, we could up that to, because we have the MTCP. Okay, now let's not change too many things at once. Let's change this back and then we'll leave that at 460. So WMake. No, we'll do this here. Um, WMake clean. And now we're going to try and figure out what happens when 
stuff gets buffered. There we go. So we fixed the MTCP code, kind of. Next up is to fix it freezing, I guess. So let's try doing the test again. Um, so right now the test has the max TCP size of 420. And so the MTU should be what is the slip MRU versus MT? It's 420 plus 40, which would be 460 now. And that would be, sorry, 420. And MRU is now 420 plus 40. Wait, no slip packet is plus 80. And MRU is, holy shit, my head. Here's what we're going to do. I die on stream. Where do we set MSS to advertise? We're going to make MSS equal, okay? This is causing too much grief for me. So MSS is equal to... Okay, so MSS is always supposed to be smaller. Okay, fine. Fine. Or does it? See, we can just set it to be my MTU. Is this non-standard? I don't know. It's a good question. Shit, should big TCP buffer be smaller than max TCP size? My MTU minus overhead. My MTU minus overhead. My MTU minus overhead. Minus 40. So this doesn't include the overhead. So that's fine. Thank you, etc. So why is my test freezing now? It can't create the buffers. MTCP is 460. MTU is 460. 
minus 40 is for 20, which should be correct. The MSS should be, all right, no, that's not correct, shit. Let's put that up to four, uh, shit. Okay. All right. Yeah, we put the MT up to 460. Max TCP size is 420. And the MTU is 460, but we won't get packets that big. I don't think. Well, we will. And we'll drop them. No, we won't. We'll make them bigger. Shit. Uh, okay, let's think about this. We're just gonna, we're not gonna mess with the MSS. What we're going to do is indirectly fix this the proper way. My tests have the assumption that it you know, you can go the same amount in as out, which is wrong. So MTU 420, um, we're gonna have to have a test that tests um, the input and the output. So we're gonna go to test IO and today we're going to test the input. Um, and then we're just going to write back data length. Oops, yeah, so we're just going to write back the amount we've received. Um, payload length. Uh, what's this? So, payload pointer. Good, we're gonna specify stuff in TCP links now. So let's confirm that we can get 420 in, nothing more, nothing less. So the MTU, sorry, the MIU should be what defines this. Oh, whoops. I commented out the wrong stuff. Aren't I a genius? Okay, test this. So it's fragmenting there. Um, let's remove the MRU stuff. Okay, let's remove the MTU stuff. Does MTU affect the input? Okay, that's weird. So MTU affects the amount of packets that you can have in. Shit, so Slurp has it written the other way around, of course. So slurp MRU equals slurp MTU equals um, MT, yeah, MTCP MRU. Um, and the MRU is going to be our packet plus
equals packet plus um sorry packet x plus 40 or 60 i think it's that 480 minus 480 minus whatever what, what what's the 480 minus what <laughs> shit no i can figure this out 480 okay so 60 An MTCP MRU. We're going to set that to 420, but it actually should be minus 40. So this should be 380. So we're going to try testing packets of size 380 and see how that fares. So 350 all the way up to 420. And we'll just test that we get this, the correct packet out. So let's run the test. Shit. What? What is happening here? Okay. So here it runs up to 420. 421 has no echo. What? What's no echo? Oh, that's an error. So yes, 420 is correct here. And at 421, it starts fragmenting, which means the MTU is correct there. And I think MTCP is fragmenting it. We can test that by going down to 400 here and seeing if that fragments it still. No, we can't. We can't test that because the MTU and MRU were linked. Um, but it shouldn't have any effect, should it? Uh, let's change that MRU and MTU just to double check that that's not having an effect. There's no whatever you call it. Oh, the input is fragmenting it. So if we do slip MRU, MTU, 480, and slurp will start fragmenting the input. Okay, so what if we don't fragment it? What happens then? Does it just get stuck with I mean, we, we measured how much um, it was able to get in, didn't we? Earlier to confirm that. So I think MRU equals 420, uh, 460. Let's see, MRU, MRU should be the amount that is able to come out without fragmentation. Now this actually, needs to be a little bit trickier since we can't, we have to avoid the incoming uh, fragmentation, don't we? Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to test.py and we're gonna make it so, um, 
we should be able to send it an amount. Um, so what we should do is we should uh, con send string i and then over in test io we should be able to do what the hell the opposite code in c um so we're going to have to be able to read um c read sorry um c read number from string i really wish you had a better way to put this um string to l you know we're just going to do this a different way um and we're going to make a buffer um ah, shit uh okay int start equals one. And whenever we get a packet, we're going to ignore the packet. It's well, we're going to free it, obviously. Um, but then what we're going to do is uh, mem copy our, we have a static buffer here, static um, small buff um, 80, sorry, uh, I guess we'll put this as 500, and then we'll just set that to be a null character, I guess, um, sorry, that, the letter A, and then B will be B, And then what we will do is we'll copy it to this. Um, please go away, cat. You don't live here. You don't live in our house. Get out of our yard. So we're going to M copy. Small buff. Um, let's just go with A for now. Wait, do we have calloc? No, we have mem set. Oh my god, I'm such a smart person. All right, hang on a second, guys. I might be able to program something simpler than not simpler, but like smart. Okay, that's not very helpful there, mem set. Is this an SCP file? Why is my terminal redacting stuff? Okay, so we're gonna m set this, m set string int size. Um, so we're going to m set um, the the buffer. M set buffer string int size. So I think that would be buff. Int would be the character, which would be A, and then the size would be start plus plus. Sorry, start, and then that length would be start plus plus. And we should probably also check that like, it's not gonna overflow the buffer. Um, So if start greater than 420, I guess, max TCP size, um, then we're just going to, I guess, error. 
packet too big. And then, sorry, uh, then we'll just do else, then we'll set it and then queue it. Um, car C equals A, if start divisible by two, car um, C equals B. Okay, this is horrible code. But that's okay. So let's see. We'll go from zero to 500. Uh, trying I bytes. We're going to send. We're going to send just the, the number. And then we're going to try and get back. the correct value, but we're going to have the DOS side generate the value instead. All right, let's see if this works. And this will be used for testing the MTU. Okay. A bytes like is requirement. Um, we'll just send B nothing for now. You just need to give it a packet. What the heck? What? Ah. Uh. I was writing past stuff. Oh shit, that should be data. No echo. Why does it say that? Let's just um, have our code explain what it wanted to see. So, yeah, uh, print or we'll print expected. So what's happening here? Trying zero bytes. Uh, are we starting at zero? What the heck? No, we start at one. Excuse me. So it's now outputting all the bytes it can. And it gets 420, and then it's obviously not going to work. So now we set the MTU to 4, I don't know, 410. And let's see what changes there. This test takes a little longer, but we probably should have the test in and test out. So that stops at 410. Huh? Trying 410 bytes and then it gives us 410 bytes. And I guess what? 
All right, so uh, I might have to stop for today. We've we've realized that our testing me testing testing methodology is not correct. Um, we're running it in a range, so what we should be doing is we should have two tests: um, input test and output test. Um, input test should um, have host send um, packets of size A and bot reply with Y or N. And then output test should have bot send packets of size A and host check which is what we're doing now. And then we can figure out how MTU val well, we know how MTU values um, work together. Um, and then we can possibly finally fix the freeze. But uh, this is a, a little bit of a horror show. But you can see we're getting there. Um, it might good be fine to just start with what we have now when we get back. What do you think? Anyway, I'll see you all later. Yes, we are doing it. Um, but we shall conquer slurp. We shall conquer slurp using rigorous testing and I don't know. Why is it printing the output? It shouldn't be printing output. Um, like right now, let's just do a sanity check. It goes up to how many, how many bitty bytes? 420? So trying 420 bytes. And we get back 420 bytes. Isn't that weird? Do you know why? Oh no. We'll set it. To, well, it shouldn't be. What the heck? Why is it able to send 420? Or whatever, the max TCP size. Like, I thought the MSS explains that you can't send ones larger than that. Like, what the, what, WTC, huh? Get good, inject HTML, whatever. See you later, skater.